Think of your inside middle finger as a counterpoint. It does no pushing. All it is is something to push against, okay? So this outside middle finger, my right hand does all the pushing and it's pushing straight inward. My hands touch, so I'm letting my thumbs touch. It doesn't matter how they touch, but if they touch, they can stay on in alignment. If your hands don't touch, there's really nothing guiding you to keep them in alignment. So let your hands touch. So again, the wall, I want to wet it inside and out so that there's no friction. You'll notice my wheel is also spinning more slowly now. Pushing in towards the center, I use a, quite a bit of force at the bottom of the piece, and I gently release pressure as I travel up the pot. Don't over pull the top rim, so as I'm pulling up, gently release, and then I control the top rim. So I have a finger on each side of the rim, and I'm gonna make a little fence over it. And this is something that I do at the end of each pull. And what, what that does is it compresses the top rim, makes it very strong, and keeps it very even. So if you've had problems with your top rim getting uneven, this will solve your problem. And before each pull, I go through the same motions. I wet the wall inside and out so that I don't drag. I make a little notch down here, so I have something to pull up against, and I'm ready to go. Push in towards the center, I'm slowly rising upward. See my hands are touching, my thumbs are touching. As I get up to the top of the wall here, I don't need to apply as much pressure. So I'm gently releasing pressure, being careful not to over pull the top rim. Gently release, control. Okay, so two things about pacing. You'll notice my wheel is spinning a little bit slower now. And also, I wanna to touch it everywhere. So my pace is really determined by the speed of the wheel. I'm gonna do one more pull here, kind of demonstrating two different things that could go wrong in your pacing. One is going much faster than the wheel speed. So if you're going whoosh, you can see that I'm not touching it everywhere so I'm leaving kind of indents, um, your pot will become more uncentered. It can actually, you know, knock your pot off center. So um, don't go too fast, you know, but it's nothing to the world. I can just hold my, I'm holding my wooden rib up against the pot. And this is just a great trick if your pot ever starts to become wiggly or you've gouged it, if you've injured it in some way, I can just hold the wooden rib up against it and it's like a new pot, okay? So that's one thing to be careful about is tracking up too fast. Um, the opposite of that would be going too slowly. So if I'm lingering, you know, you don't want to linger. If I'm lingering, I'm kind of hanging out in one spot. If you hang out in one spot for too long and you're not moving upward, your fingers will gradually touch each other and you'll have a flying donut. You'll actually just press right through the wall. Um, so don't linger. Just try to maintain just a nice, slow speed up the pot. I'm pretty close to a quarter inch wall thickness. On my last pull, what I like to do is instead of just going straight up, I like to do a little pre-shaping. So I let my hands take turns. I'll push in and push out and push in and push out. Start to shape the pot with my last pull instead of relying on the rib to do all of the shaping. So I'm pressing out and pressing in and pressing out and pressing in. And this is a great opportunity for you to be working in your sketchbooks. So to work out some of your ideas for shapes or things that you've seen in books or magazines or just a shape that you'd like to try. So remember to be using your sketchbook because it saves you a lot of time. Okay, so I've done a little pre-shaping and now it's time to rib. I'd like you to start off ribbing with either your rubber rib, you'll have a blue rubber rib, or your wooden rib. When I rib, I work back at four o'clock, and don't use your rib at a 90 degree angle. It will bite the pot, and it will probably bite you. Always turn the rib so that it's moving with the pot. When I rib, I always have a hand that gently supports the pot on the inside, so I've wet my hand so that it glides. Because if I just apply pressure with my rib, my pot is not that strong. I'll just make a big indent. It'll kind of drag it sideways. Um, you won't be happy. So my hand gently supports it on the inside. And I just hold the rib in one spot, pull it off, clean it. The wooden rib is very strong, so it does fix it if it's wiggly. But also, you can 
really refine some nice soft angles. Okay, so try your wooden rib. Also try your rubber rib. The nice thing about the rubber rib and the metal rib is I can make a curve. I can make any curve that I like and I can hold this curve up to the side of my pot and gently pull it away, clean it off. Um, just be careful that you're not moving the rib up and down the pot as it's spinning. If you're doing this, you're not going to get a shape. Um, you're not going to be able to control the shape. So remember, you just apply pressure in one spot, gently release, clean your rib. I really like the metal rib, um, but I wouldn't recommend starting off with it as your first rib to try. Maybe try it after you are a little more familiar with ribbing. So why would I want a rib? One is to further refine the shape um, and it helps to remove the slurry, that mud from throwing, removes the slurry from the surface. And it's a great way to add volume because I can press the pot out to fill the rib and I'm thinning out the wall. All at the same time that I'm removing moisture from the pot. So instead of the pot turning into mud, it's helping to dry it out. So it's a very strong way. Strong way to modify your pot's shape. Okay. And I would really like you to experiment with the shape of your cylinders. Um, try some shapes that you have in mind in your sketchbook. Don't feel like you have to make a match set. I'd really like you to just experiment with the different shapes that you can produce on the wheel. Okay, so once I've ribbed the outside, next thing I'm gonna do is rib the inside. So I'm just gonna take the rib and to push out a little bit, again, cleaning it, just applying it in one place, cleaning it off. Okay, only have two other things to consider here. The foot and the rim or the lip. To consider the foot, I'm gonna take my wooden knife and I'm just going to do a 45 degree angle cut. And this is going to remove excess clay and chew it up to round. So it's a common problem starting off that you'll leave a lot of excess clay down here. So this 45 degree angle undercut is just a great way to get rid of that extra weight. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do, step two to this, is I'm going to use the side of my finger and I'm going to create a little change of direction. And this change of direction is really important because it'll slow and actually stop the flow of glaze. So if your glaze application is a little thick, if there perhaps would have been a glaze drip down here, that you'd have to grind off of a kiln shelf, this will stop it. And it's also a nice finish. It indicates where to stop glazing and where to start the wax application. And just remember that we are not trimming these pots. We're not turning them upside down and trimming off the bottom. We're finishing them right side up. That's why we have the nice flat bottoms. So really take a moment to consider this bottom edge. We like that little undercut because it gives our pot a little um, levitation, a little shadow from the table. It's not becoming one with the table. The next thing we want to consider is the rim. Um, we had talked about just a controlled edge to keep it nice and even. You can see how that top edge um, would not be very comfortable to drink out of. It also looks as if it had been cut with a knife. So we want to touch it so that my fingers are forming a V so that it has just a nice um, tapered edge. Okay, and the last thing I want to look at before I cut this little guy off is to take my sponge down into the bottom and to remove any excess water that I have in the bottom so the bottom of this pot doesn't turn back into mud. Okay, and we are about ready, ready to be done with him almost. So when you've decided that you're done, we're going to use our wire cutoff tool and we're going to wrap it short and tight, slide it under the bottom. And short and tight is really important because if I don't hold it short and tight and the wire kind of cuts up into the side wall, you know, you really want to keep it right against the bat. 